Okay guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at Puppeteer. We're going to be scraping air quality pollution in the world real time index visualizer map. So it's a website called aqicn.org. Essentially it's a website where you can see air quality around the world. So that's what we're going to be downloading using Puppeteer. To take an example, I live in Denmark, uh, as you may know. It's a bit messy when you're like here just a lot of things that happens but let's just go down to Denmark zoom in Denmark is right here there we go I'll just pick this one doesn't really matter which one you can pick any of these points by the way so I picked this one so we're gonna be scraping this number here and this uh rating here and then we're gonna be adding some time estimate stuff here so the first thing you need to do is to import some dependencies the first one is obviously puppeteer the next one is moment the reason why we need to use moment as well is because we're gonna be doing some timing so we're gonna be locking some time when we actually took this measurement, then we're also going to be using FS because we're actually going to save this to a CSV file. The next thing is that we just want to make a instantly instantiated function. And the only reason why we do that is just because we need to use asynchronous code. The next thing is that we are going to make a variable where we're going to store the URL. So this URL you would get by essentially, you can see that I have this website up here. So you can see that the website actually is right here. So it's it's, it's this website slash city slash Denmark slash Copenhagen and then the the name of it so you can see that if I press on Copenhagen you can actually see that I get that exact same U URL so you can see that if I click on Sweden over here I get this URL so essentially the URL up here is just just the URL and you could put whatever URL you wanted you could even make an application that checked multiple uh, URLs Essentially, it's just a URL where to extract information from. Next up, we want to launch the actual Puppeteer browser. And we're going to be doing that headless true, which just means that we are not going to be able to see the browser. And for debugging, it's actually really neat to be able to just set this to false. And then you can actually see the browser at work. Next up, we um, are going to navigate to the website. We're going to be making a variable where we are a awaiting the browser to open a new tab. Then we're going to be loading a awaiting. So we're going to be waiting the new page we just opened to go to that URL. And we're going to wait until it has been loaded. Next up, we need to get the air quality index. So the air quality index is essentially the object that stores both this value and this value over here. That's just what I call this air quality index. And, and by the way, way I got that was to just go on to this one and you can see that I just and I just clicked on here and you can see that the ID right here is just a Q I W G T value and you can see that it highlights the number there so usually when you want to extract some information you're just gonna use the Chrome debugging tool or any other modern browsers debugging tool and select the element and if you're lucky they're going to have an ID and you can actually drag out the information directly from that ID. You can see that Puppeteer actually uses selectors. If you know jQuery, you can see that it uses the same selector. So you can actually select them by ID. And if you select this ID, you can actually extract both the number here and the text here. Because if we select the text right here, you can actually see that it has the ID of AQIWGT value and it has a title called good and a value of 36. So I actually get both data out of this one line here. So I get the first, and by the way, the way I get this is that I make a constant, so I make a constant variable. I name it index. I A, oh wait, this is a bit confusing, I know. So, and if you know math, you know that this makes sure that this get calculated first. So essentially, I am make sure that I calculate this within these first. Then I'm also, and then I'm a awaiting the getting property text content, and text content would be this value. This the text within an element is the text content, and then I a await that entire thing. JSON dot value and then I get the index. So 
if you wanted to select a different value, you would just put a different ID here or a different selector. You can pretty much do any, any selectors that you would be able to do in something like jQuery. You would be able to select it by the first class. Um, maybe if it had, um, you could probably even select titles with the label of good. So you could also do the XPath. There's a lot of ways to select this value. Next up, we're going to be extracting the title. And as I already explained, this value already contains both values. So I'm just going to be getting the property title instead. And you can see here, the property title actually equals the good. So we get both data from this one. But if they hadn't put the title here, we'd obviously have to extract from both this one and this one. But it just happened to be on there. So next up, this one is... Again, a bit confusing, but it is actually not that confusing. So you can see up here, I put this in a variable because I use it two places, but down here, I only use it one place. So I just wrap this entire thing. So this essentially would just be the AQI. So, but I only use it one place, so I use it down here. And I just select this one, and this will actually give me the location. So you can see that uh, the location is up here. So you can add, so the location. If you want to do some basic searching, you can actually just do document dot query selector and just in here, and then you can actually pretty much put the same syntax in and press enter, and you can see that this highlighted this value up here. You can actually play around with this, and it's probably a bit easier to test around in here before you go in here and actually extract information. So you can see that I got this element and you can see that it's an A element and you can see that it has, a, you can see that we are extracting the text content. So to see the text content, we're just gonna expand that and you can see that the text content is actually this. So the name would be this plus this. And that's the way I extracted the title. I could probably also have extracted off from up here. I just decided to do it from here. You can usually data is the same data is represented in multiple places. And pretty much it's just the easiest place for you to extract it. That is the one you should pick. So I just picked this one. The next thing we're going to do is actually write this data to a CSV file. So we're just going to check if this data already exists. And if it already exists, then we're just going to append on to the file. I will explain this in a second. Else, uh, we'll just write an actual new file with this headers. So the date, time, the index, the title, and the location. So to explain the, the data that we are actually putting in this file, first we are doing a new line because this is a, we are pending onto a, a new file. I will actually run this. It's probably easier to explain. So we'll just do node app. But you can see that because the file was not already there, so this if statement would have been triggered. First, we are writing these three, so the date, time, the index, the title, and the location, and then a new line. So you can see that here we go, and then a new and then a new line. And then essentially, I just follow the same sort of schema that I first put the time, and this is where we use moment. I just wanted it to be moment because that is a much easier way of working with time. Second value is this. Then we have the title and then we have the, the actual location. And you can see that here and then we separate it and then we have the index and then we separate it, the title. And then at last we take the location. And because we're using CSV file, if we were using a different format or maybe not even saving this to a file because we could also just have added this to an API or done whatever we want with the data pretty much at at this point I'm just deciding to write it to a file and just if there is any quotes and comments and stuff like that I'm just replacing them right here just with an empty space and last off something that you have to remember when you work with Puppeteer is to actually close your browser okay you can see how you could use this template of extracting data and pretty much apply it to any website. So I hope you learned something. It was I thought it was a pretty cool, funny project to show off some Puppeteer. I will definitely do more Puppeteer in the future because I actually think it is very fun to take these websites and pass their data. I hope you learned something and see you in the next one. Bye!